Good day, good day. Welcome back to the headquarters. Today I want to take you guys through steam phase diagrams. Phase diagrams. Wow, I wish I could spell. <laughs> okay. These help us do everything we want to do with steam and steam quality. So if we look at water and we heat that water up, every bit of temperature we put in, here's temperature, here's enthalpy. So every bit of heat that we pour in, this is kilojoules. This is basically your Q, but it's divided by a unit mass. So it's almost like the stored temperature in a certain unit, uh, in, in a small mass of steam. So we start off at zero. Let's call this state one. And we heat it up to state two. Well, all this heat that we put in is directly core. If, as we pour in more heat, we get more temperature. Very simple. Till we get to the boiling point. When we go to that boiling point over to, let's call it state three, we don't, as we increase the heat or we turn up the dial on that boiling pot of water, we don't get any more temperature rise out of it. All that energy goes into converting that water to steam. So this is a low quality steam or a low percentage. This is a high quality steam. This is right at the point where it's all dry steam. So everything out here, out to point four, is dry steam. So what we have is wet steam and all out here we have dry steam. So this is basically inside here our percent, our quality. So Let's go over this, like what some of this means and make sense of this. I'm sure you've seen it before, but there's also constant pressure lines in here. So as we increase pressure, let's say this is 100 degrees C at atmospheric temperature. If we increase the pressure, we go up and down, we increase and decrease pressure. As we increase pressure, we know our boiling point goes up. So these are our constant pressure lines right here. That's kind of important to remember. All our activities take place at these constant pressures and at these constant temperatures inside the dome. So now some of the terminology we see in here, let's scroll down a little bit. Some of the terminology we see inside of here. Um, let's go with line one to two. So at this spot, like I said, we're all water, no steam. So all along this line up until the boiling point, we are all water and no steam. Uh, this is called sensible heat. So why do I know or how do I remember that this is called sensible heat? Because it makes sense to me. As I pour more heat to it, I see a direct temperature rise. So you'll also hear this called a saturated liquid, meaning like we could have steam going on or we could have water going on. In this case, we're all water. That's an, another way of saying that is we are a saturated liquid. All right, let's look at line from line two to three. So here we are, some water and some steam. So in between here, this is where our steam occurs. And we're some varying percentage of some water and some steam. The heat that occurs during here, we call latent heat. You'll just have to remember that name. It's the, this is sensible heat. 
this is latent heat. So the sensible heat to bring it up to its boiling point is sensible heat. That phase change where we convert it from a liquid to a gas, that's called the heat of latency. Sometimes you'll also see this called the enthalpy of evaporation. Because essentially, boiling and evaporation is the same process. So, and in this, like we discussed, we're talking about quality, right? Talking about quality of steams. It's very linear, so it works out really well. This is also called a dryness faction. And then we have line 3, 4. So from line 3, 4, we're going from a saturated gas now to um, a dry steam. So we're all dry throughout this point. So in this case, we're all steam. no water. So this is also called the superheated region. Um, sometimes you'll call this a saturated gas or a saturated vapor. That's important for when you're reading your steam tables to know that. So this is the region that we're dry steam. Okay, another important part I want to give you is more about the enthalpy and how it applies and, and what different sections are. So what we have here is our H of our fluid. This is important for your steam tables. And in this portion, we have your HFG. F stands for fluid, G stands for gas. And in this section, we have the heat stored, or the heat required, to bring it up to the gaseous state. So just remember this, and when we're working through problems, and we will, I'll take you through in the next lesson, I'll take you through some different problems where we work through this. So HG equals HF plus HFG. So this is that heat of evaporation, or that enthalpy of evaporation. This is simply the, the latency heat to bring it, just simply bring it to a boil. Then we have the process of the phase change to bring that water from from liquid to gaseous state. And we must note that at this state, we don't have any pressure changes or temperature changes. All the energy goes into the actual phase change. And HG is just the heat required to turn it into the gaseous state. So pretty simple. Um, I don't think there's much more to take you through. I'm gonna take you through another lesson of how this applies to our steam tables and how to apply this to our various questions. Each question I go through, I draw a little sketch. So let's call it a day for now and um, call it an easy one. Take care and I'll see you another day.